Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I was planning on showing you how to clock in a vice on a manual milling machine. There's obviously a lot of benefits to being able to clock in a vice on a manual milling machine quickly, uh, mostly for setup times. However, it is also just down to the fact that when you have taken the vice off, potentially to use, you know, another piece of equipment such as a rotary stage or even a dividing head that I've just got under there, um, you've then got to put the vice back on. And if you can do it quickly, it makes it more of a pleasure to do than a pain. And right here, we've got all of the bits of equipment that we're going to need to be able to do it. Um, I'm going to be using Allen keys, uh, which just suits my needs, but in your case, you might well need to have uh, a ring spanner. Um, our trusty copper leather face mallet. These are my pull down clamps, but um, you might just be using, as I said, your standard sort of clamping equipment to hold the vice down. Um, clock holding. Yeah, you heard me correctly. Um, this is for holding a clock up in the spindle of your mill. Um, that is a completely fine option. Um, just remember to stick your the, the head of your mill into low gearing so that it makes the spindle harder to move so it's not influencing the readings you're getting. On and the final piece of equipment, your DTI. Um, I've got a Mitter Toyo 10 micron clock, which is more than adequate for what I'm doing. And I'll be using a mag base for work holding. So first of all, I'm just going to set the DTI up roughly. And as I said earlier, this may vary for you, uh, depending on how you want to work hold your clock. Now, this is where trick number one comes in. I'm putting your voice on the table. You can roughly guess whereabouts it needs to be um, in terms of being parallel to the table just by running your finger along the back edge. Now, if you've got a vice like my old ab wood, which has got a huge casting on the bottom, um, the best bet you can get to is by looking down the bolt holes and uh, seeing how well lined up one of the edges are or the edges of the holes are to the edges of the T-slot. But trick number one really is this which is nipping down nipping down not swinging on it but nipping down one clamp on one side of the vice what this does is it gives you a, a pivot point for the vice to be able to swing on so when you're running the clock from you know from uh, left to right you can then check that always have having this side set up as your zero as you can see, I've set the DTI up on the left-hand side, top corner of this vice. Always go off of the fixed jaw, not the moving jaw. Um, now at this point, we can show you basically the major tip or trick, if you like, for being able to clock in a vice quickly on a manual milling machine. And that is to simply tighten up, nip up, I should say, this clamp on this side not no need to swing on it just to nip it up reason being is because then this provides a pivot point for the rest of the vice so you only have to worry about moving this end the common mistake is people either put both on and they nip up both or they have them like i've had it before where people have tried to clock in vices and they haven't clamped it at all um, they get it perfectly parallel on the table and then when they clamp it down, it moves. Um, so you don't want to be chasing your tail like that. So clamp down. I always clamp down the left-hand side clamp. Um, but that's only because I'm right-handed. So any adjustments that we need to use our uh, trusty mallet for is, uh, is always on the right side, which just works for me. From here, all we need to do is move the machine table in Y so that we can add preload onto the DTI. Just about there, somewhere near zero, there we go. So now this side of the vise 
we're going to call that zero and we'll need to keep returning to here and resetting our zero on the DTI for every time we make a move. So then now I'm going to using the X feed, I'm going to come across and as you can see, we've wildly come off real quick. Um, so now the needle isn't actually in contact with the vice jaw at all, which is fine. We're now going to take our mallet and make some small adjustments. So that may not have looked a lot, but we're just going to run back down to our zero and see where we're at. As you can see, the needles come off of zero now. So if we just reset, we're not going to change anything other than the movement in Y. Um, so if we back off and then put the preload back on, so we're just touching zero again. There you go. This will probably move because we're changing direction in the Y, in the Z, uh, in the X. There we go, back on zero. And then we wheel up. Now there you can see that we're 60 microns away. So we're getting closer, but just need to make another adjustment. Now that we're getting close, we can now nip up this side. So just got a little bit of resistance pressure. And then we can just wheel our way across again. As you can see, we're pretty much there. And again, because of the backlash in my thing. I think, for me, that is good enough. So I just moved over to the other side, and I'm just... Checking the vice is on zero again. And then we will wheel across to see where we're at. Is somewhere near zero again. And we'll whack it back over to our zero position on the other side of the vice. And that is the mutts nuts. So, in an effort to prove that there was no hocus pocus going on with the footage, I'm going to clock this vice in real time so you guys can see just how quickly you can do it.
There you have it. I hope that video was helpful for you. Uh, future videos are more likely to be project-based uh, from Mojo MachineWorks, but there will be the odd tip and trick video that I will chuck in as well. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.